11th chapter of the book of Romans, and uh, we're going to look at, uh, starting at verse 17 down to verse 24 of that 11th chapter in the book of Romans, in Romans chapter 11, beginning at verse 17 down to verse 24. Found that? Mm-hmm. Say amen. 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 If you haven't found it, say wait for me. Amen. Amen. The amen. word of God there it reads as follows. Um, if some of the branches have been broken off, and you, though a wild olive shoot, mm-hmm. have been grafted in among yeah. the others, and now <laughs> share in the nourishing sap from the olive root. Do not consider yourself to be superior to those Hmm. other branches. If you do, consider this. You do not support the root, Hmm. but the root supports you. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You will say then, branches were broken off so that I could be grafted in. Mm -hmm. Granted, Mm -hmm. but they were broken off because of unbelief. Mm -hmm. And you stand by faith. Do not be arrogant, but tremble. Yes. For if God did not spare the natural branches, he will not spare you either. Mm, yeah. Consider, therefore, the kindness and sternness of God, sternness to those who fell, but kindness to you, provided that you continue in his kindness. Yeah. Otherwise, you also will be cut off. Mm, mm, mm. And if they do not persist in unbelief, they will be grafted in. <laughs> For God is able to graft yes. them in again. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. After all, if you were cut out of an olive tree that is wild by nature, and contrary to nature, were grafted into a cultivated olive tree, mm-hmm. how much more readily will these, the natural branches, mm-hmm. be grafted into their own mm-hmm. olive tree? Uh-huh. Amen. I just want to draw your attention back to that 24th verse there. It Mm -hmm. says, after all, if you were cut out of an olive tree Mm -hmm. that is wild by nature Mm -hmm. and contrary to nature were grafted into a cultivated olive tree, how much more readily will these, the natural branches, Mm -hmm. be grafted into their own olive tree? Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 As you take your seats. We would uh, ask for your prayers this morning as we use as our sermon topic, blessed like blue. <laughs> blessed like blue. As a matter of fact, you can turn it and you can say, I'm blessed like blue. Y'all might not know what that means. Hopefully you'll know what that means in a minute. <laughs> blessed like blue. Well, um, <clears throat> with, uh, with few options and even less time for sort of leisurely um, television viewing, uh, the only show that, that I, and I think Angela probably as well, that, uh, that we watch on a regular basis, that we watch with regularity, is, uh, is the OWN Network's series of uh, Ava DuVernay's uh, contemporary drama called Queen Sugar. Okay. Uh, that documentary, that drama is based on the novel, uh, the book by Natalie uh, Bazile. And uh, the story really, it is set in Louisiana. Um, and Queen Sugar, it chronicles the lives and the loves of the estranged borderline family, mm-hmm. the estranged siblings. There's Nova, who is sort of this worldly wise journalist and this activist. There's Charlie, who is the savvy former uh, wife and professional manager of her uh, then professional uh, basketball player, basketball star. And then there's Ralph Angel, who was a formerly incarcerated young father who was and is in search of redemption. And uh, last season, which was season uh, three, the Borderlands found themselves Um, fighting to save their family's farm and fighting to save uh, their father's legacy while at the same time they found themselves navigating their own personal journey and personal struggles. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that fight took place within their their uh, close-knit family unit there, but, but, but other times the fight took place with those within the community who were also fighting 
to uh, really chopping at the bit to, to take over the border loans property. And uh, as I thought a little bit about, <clears throat> you know, this past week and one of the more interesting story angles uh, in season three, which was the last season, uh, was that of Ralph Angel, who again was the, uh, the former convict and his love interest at the time, whose name was Darla, who was a recovering um, drug addict. And together they were raising and are raising their son, whose name is Blue. But towards the end of season three, we find Ralph Angel is reeling when Darla confides in him that given her promiscuous and uh, drug-fueled past, she wasn't really sure if Blue was Ralph Angel's biological son. Mm -hmm. And so to his shock and to his horror, Ralph Angel eventually gets a DNA test. And the DNA test results uh, reveal and confirm the fact that Ralph Angel is not Blue's biological father. And uh, even though he's devastated by this news, he and Darla have been attempting to push forward through, um, through that revelation um, as though it, it meant really nothing at all. And, and they're gonna tr they, 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 they weren't really gonna tell Blue and in their mind, everything would be okay. They would just move on with their lives. But in this season four, Nova, the sister, has written a family tell-all book mm -hmm. that, uh, in essence, exposes all of the truths that the family would have otherwise wanted to keep a secret, including the truth that Ralph Angel is not Blue's biological father. In other words, blue is illegitimate, so to speak. And despite all of their best efforts and attempts at covering it up so that everything looked okay, the reality is that this is coming out. Mm -hmm. And I thought about that within the context of our own lives because sometimes, despite our own best efforts, to keep things covered up and looking good on the outside, in reality, the lives we live and the struggles that we face and the hard times in which we are trying to maintain a pure and a holy standard, uh, the internal and sometimes external opposition that we grapple with on a daily basis reveals the truth of your life that all of us, like Blue, are somewhat illegitimate. Mm -hmm. So let me, like Nova, just sort of let the cat out of the bag a little bit this morning and say that just because you carry a Bible doesn't mean that you are necessarily abiding in the Word. Yes, right. the truth. Mm -hmm. And that the Word is abiding in you. Amen. Just because you send your kids to a Christian school doesn't necessarily mean that you're a godly parent. That's right. Just because you wear usher gloves or a deacon's pen or a choir robe or even a preacher's robe doesn't mean that you are abiding. That's right. Amen. Amen. Times it can be easy to keep up appearance mm -hmm. when all the while underneath there's a different truth oh, yeah. percolating beneath the surface. That's right. Amen. Roses look wonderful and pretty when you give them as a gift or as a present. And everyone is grinning and everyone's excited about how wonderful they look. But how many of you know that give them a few days and what they were at the moment in which they were cut from the vine will ultimately be manifested right before your very eyes. And that is, they're just dead. That's it. Amen. Amen. Having been cut off from the source. Yes. And so now, despite the fact that Ralph Angel and Darla didn't want Blue to know the truth, he finds out on a playground from another little playground friend that Ralph Angel is not his real father, and Blue is devastated mm -hmm. to know that he is somewhat illegitimate. Mm -hmm. And this forces Ralph Angel and Darla to tell him the truth. Mm -hmm. 
And I'm just here this morning to tell us the truth. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus. And so what happens is that in this tender moment when Ralph Angel is trying to help him understand, Blue asked the question about what it means to be his biological father. Mm -hmm. Lord Jesus. To which Ralph Angel puts Blue's little hand on his own chest to feel his heartbeat. Mm -hmm. And then he takes Blue's hand and he puts it on Ralph Angel's chest to feel his heartbeat. And he tells Blue, in essence, that the biological didn't matter in that their heartbeats were the same. Amen. And that even though Blue wasn't his biological son, nevertheless, he chose him. Yes, Lord Jesus. He chose Blue mm -hmm. to be his son. You might be saying, well, why, why, what is the point to, to all of that? Well, seeing that really blessed me for two reasons in particular. Number one, because here was Ralph Angel acknowledging the illegitimacy of Blue, but letting him know that nevertheless, Blue was blessed. Yes. He was special. Mm -hmm. He was unique, so much so that Ralph Angel, even though he didn't have to do it, even though he could have walked away from it, Ralph Angel chose to be Blue's father. Amen. And he chose Blue to be his son. Mm -hmm. I know that went over somebody's head right there. But he chose to be mm -hmm. Blue's father. Yes. Yeah. That's right. Uh. And so the second reason why that really blessed me was because really it spoke to the human condition in which you and I find ourselves in as well. Amen. That despite our natural disconnect from the holiness of God, born in sin and shaped in iniquity, despite the fact that we don't deserve it, despite the fact that in many sense in our naturalness we are illegitimate, nevertheless you and I are blessed like blue because God chose us to be our father. He chose you despite you. This chapter that we are in, it, it, it is really somewhat prophetic in nature. And I, and I say that because here we have the Apostle Paul is really, in essence, foretelling about the rejection of the Jews. <clears throat> Even though at the time that Paul was telling them this, um, the governing structure of the church, as it were, was still standing. But after about 10 years uh, following him writing this letter to the Church of Rome, the temple was in fact destroyed. Yeah. The Jewish governmental structure was in fact overthrown. Yeah. And the Jews were in fact expelled from the promised land to which they have never since, to this day, mm -hmm. been able to recover. And so for you and I, Gentiles, as it were, our calling and our privileges as God's church was really made possible by this rejection of the Jews as brought about through their disobedience. <clears throat> but even though they were rejected, even though they were cut off as a result of their disobedience, what Paul is seeking to convey here is the fact that nothing they did put them outside of the reach of God's power. Nothing that they did put them outside of the reach of God's provisions Amen. to bring them back. Amen. That's true. That despite their blinded state, their blinded condition, at the name of Jesus, yes. every knee should bow mm -hmm. yes, Lord. and every tongue should confess yes. that he is Lord oh, to yes. the glory yes. of God Amen. and that God could bring them back again. Yes. 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 And so what was really Paul's aim here? Well, number one, he wanted uh, this to be known generally speaking, but in addition to that, he also wanted to get the Jews' attention so that they too would experience the freedom and the liberty that was to be found in the gospel. Mm -hmm. okay. Not in the law, not in the rules, not in the regulations, but in 
the gospel. Mm -hmm. That's right. But third, he also wanted to warn the mm -hmm. Gentile Christians not to treat the Jews with contempt. Mm -hmm. Because after all, the blessings that they were now experiencing were a result of the patriarchs and the ancestors of the Jewish nation. He wanted them to know, in effect, that they had been blessed like blue mm -hmm. by having been chosen yes. and grafted into the place yes. where the Jews had been broken off from. Right. Yes. Amen. He wanted them to know that they were blessed. Yes. And so this particular discourse where we are this morning actually begins back in, in verse 1 so that as we are reaching our starting point for where we are, mm -hmm. really this morning, um, Paul has back in uh, verse 11, he's asked them the question as to whether or not uh, the people of God for their disobedience, for their sin, for their unbelief, for their rejection, had they so sinned against God that they are now out of reach of his mercy? Mm -hmm. He's asking them this rhetorical question to which Paul replies, not at all. As a matter of fact, God used their unbelief. God used the Jews rejection mm -hmm. as the turning point at which the gospel had been presented to the Gentiles who, upon hearing it, believed it and by it were saved and brought into a relationship with God. Yes. Yeah. They were illegitimate, but God nevertheless chose them. Yes. And this understandably, in part, made Israel somewhat envious. Oh, Jesus. Because after all, they had been going through all the rules yes. and trying to keep all of the regulations and yes. forbidden not eating this and abstaining from that. And mm -hmm. here you are telling me that these Gentiles, just on the basis of hearing the gospel message mm -hmm. and receiving it and believing it, that they now are bought into a relationship with the God that we serve, the God of our forefathers. How can this be? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They're not really like us. <laughs> and so Paul basically, by the time you get up about through verse 15, he's, he's, he's essentially saying, but you know, their transgressions, but if their transgressions means riches for the world and, and their losses mean riches for the Gentiles, how much greater riches will their full inclusion bring? Mm -hmm. He's saying that if by their rejection bought reconciliation into the world that was dead, mm -hmm. their rejection bought reconciliation into the world that was void of hope, surely their acceptance, when they accept the gospel, yes. will demonstrate the fact that God in the richness of his grace can all the more bring life to that which was once alive, yes, but yes, then dead, yes, and he can bring life to that again. Yes, yes. 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 And so by the time we come to verse 17, the word of God, and Paul says, if some branches have been broken off, and you, though a wild olive <laughs> shoot, mm -hmm. yes, if some branches have been broken off and you, meaning you, mm -hmm. yes, yes. meaning me, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. As a wild olive shoot yes. have been grafted in. Now I can think of no more apt illustration that Paul would use from an agricultural standpoint because what would happen is that Let's say a branch breaks off of a tree. Mm -hmm. We've all seen that happen. And there's always a little piece that's still left stuck to the tree. Yes. And what would happen is that they would literally take some type of a knife or something and they would cut a notch in that part that remained. Mm -hmm. But then they can take the branch that was cut off, even though it may have been from a foreign tree, even though it may have been from a wild olive tree, they could take that and on the end they would whittle it down so that it was a wedge that would stick into that part that they had cut off on that tree. Then they would wrap it around and it would grow together so that this foreign illegitimate branch would now feed off of the nutrients of the root of that tree. Yes, yes. 
He says, if you, though a wild olive shoot, mm -hmm. have been grafted in among the others and now share in the nourishing sap from the olive root. Yes. In other words, you are sharing in something that is really quite unnatural for you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. The fruit that you bear, how many of you know that that is not of you? That's right. Amen. 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 But that only comes as a result of your connection yes. with the root. Yes. 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 Any good that you are able to muster mm -hmm. is not of yourself. That's right. Yeah. But it is only by virtue of the fact that God is flowing in and through you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So that even those who might not believe in God, even those who might not acknowledge him as such, to the extent that they can even muster the, the, the temerity to do anything that That's is right. good. That's right. yeah. It is not of them. Amen. Right. The Bible says that we were born in sin yes. and yes. shaped in iniquity. Yes. Our natural inclination is to do what's wrong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Our natural inclination mm -hmm. is to do what is hostile towards mm -hmm. God. But yet there you have individuals who are out there manifesting the fruits, if you would. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Paul is saying, on the basis of that, do not consider yourself to be superior. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Do not consider yourselves to be to, to, to be superior to those other branches. Mm -hmm. Because if you yeah. do, Paul says, consider this point. This is a sobering point to consider. Paul says, consider this. You do not support the root. That's right. yeah. <laughs> Amen. Yes. But the root supports you. Yes. 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 Wow. How about that? Amen. You do not support the root. That's right. But the root supports you. Amen. Yeah. I I couldn't help but think about this within the the, 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 the framework of what it is that we see playing out within our society mm -hmm. day in and day out. Yes. So Angela mentioned it in the opening and things that are going on. You know, it's interesting that, you know, the, the, the United States with with its disposition to either uh, permit at best mm -hmm. or promote at worst an elitist, supremacist, governmental and societal construct. The United States has strayed back into, and some would arguably rightfully say uh, that it never left, but, but has strayed into this idea that America is so great and that apart from the reality that nothing good has ever come to America apart from God's grace. Nothing good has ever come through America apart from sharing in the nourishing sap of the provisions of God's root. But see, rather, we want to either permit and or promote policies and practices that are aimed at excluding other people. That's right. Yes. Policies and practices that are aimed at excluding other branches. Mm -hmm. What Paul was telling them about here. Mm -hmm. Excluding other branches from the bounty of God's provisions here. Yes. Yes. And what we fail to realize is that both individually as well as collectively, we are blessed yes, like are. Yeah. blue. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In that illegitimate as we are, mm -hmm. God chose us. Yes, 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 yes. As undeserving as you are, mm -hmm. God chose us. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Even when he could have walked away, yeah, even yes. when he could have thrown in the towel, even when he could have given up on you, mm -hmm. God 
chose praise his holy name. Yes, Lord. Have you ever considered that? Have you ever thought about that within the span of your day to day existence that God chose you? Have you ever considered that when you're at work and wondering how you're going to figure something out and thinking to yourself that you don't have the capacity and, and the know how and the skill to handle it? Have you ever just paused and said, God chose? me. Oh. <laughs> Have you ever thought about that within the framework of how you relate in, to, within your families that God chose you? Mm -hmm. So in that there's no room for pride. That's right. Amen. In that there's no room for places or feelings of superiority. In that there are no options for looking down on anyone on the basis of who they are or where they're from, God chose illegitimate you. Because truth be told, there's nothing about you that merits your existence. There's nothing about you that Marriage, you being here apart from God's grace. That's right. There's nothing about you that merits your existence apart from God's mercy. There's nothing yeah. about you that merits uh, you being here apart God apart from God's prerogative to have chosen you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, Lord. A wild. <clears throat> y'all wild. <laughs> well, still might be a little wild. <laughs> a wild, illegitimate, cut off branch, and God chose yes, you. Yes. He says in verses 21 through 24, Paul essentially says, For if God did not spare the natural branches, yeah. <clears throat> He will not spare you either. Amen. The natural branches had been cut off as a result of sin, as a result of mm. disobedience, as a result yeah. of rejecting God. They were natural. They belonged there. It was a part of their heritage. And nevertheless, a God who was holy did not spare them. Amen. 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 So if God didn't spare the natural branches, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he will not spare you either. Right. Mm -hmm. Lord Jesus. Paul is trying to get them to understand. He says, I want you to consider, therefore, the kindness and the sternness of God. Mm -hmm. Sternness to those who fail, yeah. but he showed kindness to you. Yes, yeah. yes. Here's the condition, provided that you continue in his kindness. Amen. In other words, you and I, knowing that we have just been grafted in, mm -hmm. if anyone ought to be kind, yes. if anyone ought to be compassionate, if anyone ought to be merciful, if anyone ought to be loving, if anyone ought to be understanding, yes. if anyone ought to be long-suffering, it ought to be those who have been grafted in. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. I don't understand how you could be grafted in, but then act like you natural. <laughs> <laughs> Understand how you can be a wild offshoot of an olive tree mm -hmm. on the root. You don't look nothing like it. Amen. But act like you belong there. Yes. And want to condemn everyone else who doesn't right. look like it. Amen. That is true. Yes. When was the last time you looked in the mirror? Not you look nothing like holiness. You look nothing like righteousness, and yet God chose you. Praise yes. the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes. And the fact that you are even remaining attached in any way, shape, or form mm -hmm. is only by God's grace. Yes, right. yes. And when you experience and appreciate the grace of God, mm 
The natural response ought to be desirous of someone else experiencing that same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not excluding them from experiencing right. it, not cutting them off from experiencing it. What are you doing? Amen. He says, he's shown you kindness provided that you continue in his kindness. Mm -hmm. The final point he drives home to them in verse 24, he says, after all, you were cut out of an olive tree that is wild by nature mm -hmm. and contrary to nature, you were grafted in to a cultivated olive tree. So you were <laughs> you were cut out of an olive tree that is wild by nature. Mm -hmm. You had no capacity or ability <laughs> to bear any fruit. Right. Contrary to nature, however, you were grafted into a cultivated olive tree. How much more readily will these, the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? Mm -hmm. We share in an amazing heritage. Mm -hmm. A heritage not only just in terms of our lineage, but a heritage of faith. Yes. From the standpoint of recognizing and understanding that if it had not been for the Lord, from a heritage that suggests that there is yeah. nothing yeah. in and of mm. me that has the ability, capacity, mm -hmm. and even the desire mm -hmm. to do what is right, That's right. apart from God. Amen. We are blessed. Yes, we are. Oh, yes. Like blue. Mm -hmm. oh, gee. And sometimes, like him, you may say, Well, wow, I, how, how is it that you love me, God, in spite of me? Mm -hmm. how, how is it that you're still here and I'm not even biologically connected to you in any way? How, how is it, God, that you still love me despite me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and in those times and in those moments, God, Gently will remind us that our heartbeats are the same. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. That the things that God wants ought to be the things that we want. Mm -hmm. And that even though he didn't have to do it, he chose us. Mm -hmm. He chose us yes. to be our father. Yes. And yes. he chose you and I to be his sons yes. and daughters. Yes. Yeah. Now the question becomes, what do we do with having been chosen by God? Amen. Do we take that fact, that reality, <clears throat> and somehow get puffed up to the point to where we want to exclude folks? <clears throat> or do we come to a place in God where we recognize that we are blessed? Yes, we are. Like blue, and illegitimate as we are, but... There may be other folks who are just as illegitimate as we are, but God in the richness of his grace mm -hmm. can graft them in yes. just as he grafted us in. That's right. That's right. I'm excited about that reality to have been chosen yes. by God. Yes, Lord. I don't know about you, but I know what I deserve. Mm -hmm. Lord Jesus. I know what I merited, right? right. But Lord. nevertheless, God still chose mm -hmm. me. Praise the Lord. He still Thank chose you. Jesus. you. Yes. And Praise you are blessed yes. beyond measure That's just right. by yes. virtue yes. of the fact yes. of being chosen. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> yes. Just by virtue of the fact of being chosen. Mm -hmm. Went to, uh, my time's down, went to this uh, uh, neighborhood sort of uh, reunion yesterday, and we were just sitting down there and kind of reminiscing about um, old times and growing up there in the neighborhood. and. There was, uh, there was one uh, guy, his name was J.W., but he's really, really short guy. And he's the same size. It's been like 30, 40 years. J.W. still not that tall right there. And uh, we were talking about playing basketball and everything. And, and uh, J.W. Said, said, man, he said, you know what I used to hate? He said, whenever we would play basketball and we would even it up, he said, man, I had the newest shoes, the, the best socks and all this other stuff. He said, but for some reason, y'all never chose me. He said, y'all never chose me. And uh, 
this guy Mark, he said, well, that's not true. He said, I remember one time when it wasn't even and we had to choose you. We, we, we chose you, JW, we chose you. And uh, he's like, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, you remember what happened? He said, we put you in the game and JW, and this is true, he had the best jump shot of all the kids, right? Because everybody would be trying to get down low, but JW, he about that tall. He'd sit out there at the top of the key and he'd make them all day, all day. There was something special, something unique, something yeah, yeah. extraordinary, something that no one else could do to where on that particular day, Mark said, no, I chose you. You you on our team. And we won that day because of you. And I thought about JW and his, <laughs> his stated inadequacies, right? And I thought about how in many respects, you and I come to the court, as it were, day in and day out. Not the right height. Not the right skills, not the right connections, but there's something unique about you. There's something special about you, something that only you can do. God says, hey, he, he knew you, he knit you together, he formed you yeah, in your mother's yeah. womb. There's something about you yeah. that even though the world may not see it, Lord Jesus. God still chose you. Yes. Mm -hmm. I thank God that 2,000 years ago that he condescended himself and he cloaked himself in human flesh and he walked among us and he died on Calvary's cross. Yes. Why? For you. Amen. For you. He he chose you. He chose you. He, he chose to graft you in even while you were yet sinners. God chose you. You're, you're blessed like blue to be a part of a family to where our Father has chosen us. Not just for time, but for eternity. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. With the remaining portion of time I have left, with every head bowed, with every eye closed, oh, yes. <clears throat> I just want to uh, for us to reflect on what that means to have been chosen oh, by God. Yes. Because there may be someone here today, under the sound of my voice, who sort of feels on the outskirts, sort of feels like they're not connected, so it feels like they're a little illegitimate and, you know, not understanding how God could relate to them. But the sacrifice that Christ made on Calvary, it was for you. Mm -hmm. It was for the person sitting next to you, but, but right now this is about you. It, it was for you. Yes. God chose you. Thank you, Jesus. And, um, if you're at a place in your life, at a place in your heart to where you just desire to be connected to a God who's holy, to a God who is sovereign, to a God who is in complete control. Mm -hmm. If you're at a point where you say, Lord, I just want to give you my life, I want to give you my heart, I want to give you my soul. I want to be grafted in that I might be the recipient of that nourishing sap that comes from the root. That's where you are today. We invite you to come, to give your heart, to give your life to God through the sacrifice that Christ made on your behalf. Would there be one today? Would there be one? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, God, we thank you. God, for this opportunity to, uh, to offer relationship with you on today, God. We ask that you would bless every person on the sound of my voice. Every family, every household that is represented here, God, continue to order our steps. Yes, Lord. God, we thank you and we praise you for the sacrifice that you have made on our behalf. And uh, God, we are just so excited about uh, what you've done, what you are doing, and what you are about to do in and through our lives, God. We give you the honor today. We give you the praise and we give you the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise amen. the Lord. Thank you. Yeah.